Hey there everyone, welcome to this video. Today it's the first flight, well, I should really say bonus video because technically it's a two for one in the day. But, um, less of that. Um, this is going to be the first flight of the SM92. Now obviously, you can see there, it is faded. Me being as eager as I was to fly this thing, I forgot to plug in my headset, and I forgot to press record like a total idiot. But never mind. I'll, I'll do it as a replay. I don't care. So, the SM92, I'm going to go briefly over its history, well, what I know about it, and I'll go briefly over the plane itself and its performance. So, the SM92 was a Italian twin-engined heavy fighter designed to be an interceptor to replace the SM91. Now, the SM91 uses the same engines, pretty much. However, these are the Piaggio P... 11 RC40s. I think these are copies of the DB605s. Maybe wrong. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments below if you would. Now the main differences between the SM91 and the SM92 is the SM91 is a lot heavier due to it packing six cannons and also another cannon tail turret, which is right here. With the SM92, however, it reduces that weight significantly. The airframe is a lot lighter. Well, not by a whole lot as far as I've been reading, but it improves the performance very well, in my opinion. It it really makes the plane better. Your bomb load has been increased to 1,000 kilograms, but from what I've been able to find, it's actually 2,000 kilograms. So, guys, you can get on it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the plane was designed to be a replacement for the SM91, a lighter variant, a better variant with better engines, because obviously this runs DB605A1s, there we go. They seem to have the same power output as the Piaggio P11s, so I'm hoping they are the same. In my opinion, I think they are. Now, the plane itself does have problems with its fuel tanks. The fuel tanks are very vulnerable, because there's a lot of them. There's three in the, the, in the left wing, three in the right wing, two in the central... I don't know how to describe that. Maybe I'll say fuselage. And then two in the central wing area. Your armament consists of three 20mm cannons, as I mentioned in the um, the bug video that I was on about. Two of them are mounted here, and one of them is mounted in the right engine, similar to a um, BF-109. This cannon is probably the harder one to get onto target, because obviously it's mounted off-center. But if you set your gun convergence to around about 600 meters to 700 meters, that's what I find to be the best. You are also armed with four fi well, 50 caliber machine guns. I'm just going to call them 50 cal because they are. Braided Safat machine guns. You get 350 rounds apiece, and there are four of them mounted in the lower parts of the engines. Very nice to have for ground pounding, is all I'll say. Having four is a lot better than having six cannons because you can fluctuate between machine guns and cannon. And that way you're not wasting cannon on ground targets like you would in the SM91 because you don't have anything else to use other than bombs. Now, your tail turret is, well, I'm, I'm just going to call it a, a cone turret. What I mean by a cone turret is if we jump to a plane like the PE-3, the PE-3 has a similar, well, shall we say, trait. The PE-3 obviously has a natural rear gun over 7.62. This gun has gotten me very many kills in this plane when I've been um, grinding war bonds with this bird. But this cone gun has the exact same horizontal guidance and vertical guidance of the SM92. As you can tell, plus two, plus two for horizontal and vertical guidance. It's very limited in its turning. I wouldn't rely on it. I have gotten one air kill with it on an F6F Hellcat. That's because he tails, sir. I did die. But I've also killed um, three AAA trucks and also a vehicle, which was a, another truck, but it wasn't armed or anything. It was just a vehicle. And I deliberately went out my way to see if I could do that with the tail turret. And yes, it can, but you do have to line it up correctly. Now, do I recommend using the SM92 over the SM91 for ground forces? Yes, for a big, big reason, because of these bombs. This can carry two 500s and it will nuke anything. The SM91's bombs are mounted outboard the engines near the wingtips. 
The SM92's bomb load is the same with the lower caliber bombs, but the 2250s and the 2500s, which I have shown here, those are center mounted. They drop at the same time. Anyway, I've blabbered on far too much. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do love my twin engined heavy fires and things like that. So, I've named a replay Handles Well, but it requires team support. This plane cannot carry a team on its own. That's one thing to note. And I've just checked my recording software and I've been chatting for over five and a half minutes and I've not even shown you guys the first plate. I do apologize for that. When it comes to me doing my stuff about certain planes, I always like to talk about them. And I always like to explain the plane, obviously. So obviously this is my very first flight in the plane. If you've seen the bug, or the one that I did with the bug that I had in the plane, You'll notice a big difference in the performance. And my team actually, well we actually, me and my team have a good little chat. And Blue Canadian, I saw him a couple of times whilst he was flying his. He mentions um, it's actually pretty good. I didn't know at the time obviously, but I just said I've only just got it so I can't answer. Now, the flight performance feels exactly the same as the SM91, however, it does have a bit of a better climb rate. But, um... It, it's nice in the test flight, it feels more manoeuvrable than the SM91. The raw rate, as Blue Canadians just put it, is actually pretty good. It won't be a fog of 190, but you can outroll most twin engine planes with it. It's very handy to have. He mentions a fairly slow return. I would have to disagree with that. It is manoeuvrable, but you will not be matching much in the way of performance of turn fights. Obviously, I mentioned in the chat again, the tail turret is complete dog shit. Um, yeah, don't rely on it. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember the reason why they put that on there. I think it's just to, like, fend off a average, like, maybe a fighter or two. But um, I mentioned at the time I'd probably use it to strafe a truck, that's about it. I actually ended up strafing three AA trucks and a vehicle as I mentioned. But the plane itself is actually very well detailed. And the reason for it, for it flying with a German camouflage is because it flew with the Germans. By the time this thing was ready to go for its first flight, the Italians were already surrendering at this point and changing sides in typical Italian fashion. That is the reason for the Balkan Klaus on the wing and the German camouflage. So those of you history buffs who say, oh, it's an Italian plane, it should have Italian camouflage. Yeah, you're wrong. You're full of crap, is all I'll say. <laughs> I'm just being brutally honest here. Now, I don't get much in the way of kills in this match. I only get a single air kill on an F4U Corsair. But I was pretty impressed with the stock firepower, as you will see. Climb rate, as you can see, you do get an attacker's spawn, so that does help. But um, it really does come in handy when it comes to overall performance. And climb rate, obviously. Now, the reason why I put the video or the replay title as requires team support is because, obviously, it's not as maneuverable as 90% of the planes on the enemy team. So I thought the smart thing to do was to turn back and wait for my 109s to arrive, and 190s and whatever my team had. That's what I recommend you do. Do wait for your team. Don't go rushing in like a twat, because you will die like one. And the bugs... Oh boy, I'm not going to get into those yet. You have to wait for the um, SM92 review for that. But don't worry. You guys will get a good one. Now, I am recording this on the 13th of March. Same as the um, the bug report and the spade impressions for this plane. So yes, I'm going to be doing a lot of talking today, which is unusual for me. <laughs> Normally I'm quite quiet, but even so. Um, I have finished my assignment. It is pretty much ready to go. I'm going to get my tutor to check it later. Or well, more like on Thursday when I go to college, which is tomorrow on the 14th. And if it's all good, send it off. Now, in typical patch fashion, 
you will get focused in this plane. Blue Canadian got about three or four planes on him. Enemy players will see your plane, realize it's not an SM-91, and will want to kill you because they're arseholes. It's like a new tradition, like they've got to kill the new planes and things like that. Don't ask me why. Now, Blue Canadian notes it being durable. Yes, to an extent. Don't get hit on your engines, as in your, your propellers. Just don't. That's just hint for one of the bugs. That's all I'm saying. Another interesting note to point out is the plane can fly back to base, even stock on one engine. So if you lose an engine for the bug, which I will mention, uh, well, within the spade impressions, yeah, you can make it back on one engine. Not many planes could do that. So take that as a unique selling point for this plane. I think P-38Js and Ls can make it back to base on one engine, but I haven't flown my L in a while because A, I've been spading in this, and B, the teams are pathetic, as you can see. They're all on the deck, they're just ground pounding, stuff like that. And coming up is my first and only kill for this match. Now, I'll be brutally honest with everyone. I only got one ace in this thing, but I am not going to use that one for the Spain Impressions. And here comes my only kill on this Corsair. I led the target a bit wrong, but once you get the lead down, it devastates the target. First and only air kill. Now, obviously, those of you who looked at the, maybe even paused the video just to look at the names of the replays that I have. Yeah, the accusations may occur is going to be the Spade Impressions. That was three kills, and that's it. Just three kills, nothing else. But, trust me, you guys are going to laugh at this one. And that is pretty much the end of the battle, because the last guy is an AP-51 engaging the SM-91 on my team. So, first impressions on the plane. Obviously, I've already spaded it, I'll be brutally honest. I should have done this recording earlier. But at the time... I was well impressed with it. It climbed well, it dived well, the air brakes came in handy. I will mention that in the spade review. But um, yeah, don't rely on that tail turret at all. Just don't. It's gotten me four kills, as I mentioned, on ground targets and one air kill, and that was lucky. But if you guys need a handy twin engined ground attacker for Tank RB with a decent payload, you're looking at it. This thing can carry some good bombs. Anyway, I'm going to go off and record the um, spade impressions for this plane. And I will catch you all on the next one.